Hey guys, welcome back. I know there's been a little bit of a delay between videos. I apologize for that. It's been a it's been a hectic uh, hectic month or so. I was uh, holidaying in New Zealand, and then I uh, moved house, which is also probably why you can hear a bit of an echo behind my voice. It's a it's a big room with not a lot of furniture, so uh, just uh, bear with me through that. Today's video is on flashlights and comes as a request from an old friend of mine, Cheese Hazard who has just been recently getting into game dev and, uh, and Unreal Engine and Blueprint Scripting. So I thought it'd be a great uh, sort of beginner level uh, introductory sort of Blueprint Scripting kind of uh, exercise. And I've gonna made you guys a little care package down here. I've gonna made you up a, a flashlight cookie, a light cookie. And we're gonna use this to make a, a light function material so that our, uh, our actual flashlight gets to project this nicer flashlight pattern. It was very easy for me to make. It's just a radial blur. Uh, with a with a gradient and uh, just render some clouds over the top and put some splotches on there uh, and uh, it's available for free for you guys to use as well as this clicky uh, flashlight switch sound effect and this uh, flashlight cone here which we'll use to sort of fake um, some ambient fog you know some some uh, light cone there so I'll package all of those guys up and put them in a download link in the description and you can uh, follow along with the video with the same assets that I use so without further ado, let's uh, right click, we'll start making out our materials. So we'll just make a material there. I'm going to call this one flashlight cone uh, underscore mat. And we'll also uh, just select our flashlight cone here in the uh, editor here. And I'm just going to click this little teapot and that will set our preview mesh to be the same one uh, as, we, as we had selected. There we go. Very cool. All right, so let's get started and build this guy out. The first thing we need to do is grab our material attributes node here. And over on the left, we want to set it to translucent and unlit. So we're just getting some uh, some soft, transparent lighting. And then we'll hold in three and click to get ourselves a color node. We'll right click this, convert it to a parameter called color. And we can even make it a sort of soft, uh, soft yellowish orange, something uh, something just like that. Next, let's hold M and click for a multiplier and then S and click for a scalar parameter, which we will name glow crank for it is our glow crank. And we'll set this a default value of about five, hook these guys up into the multiplier and plug this into the emissive color. So far so good, pretty simple. Although you can see here, all we're getting now is just a, a super bright light. We're gonna have to apply some opacity controls here to uh, to make this look a bit more, bit more realistic. You know, it's sort of give us some decay as it disappears towards the wider edge. So let's hold in U and click for our texture coordinates, which just gets our U and our V coordinates of any particular model. In fact, if we right click this and start previewing, you can see the kind of thing that we have here. So we have a red and a green, that is our X and Y. In other words, the first two of our three vector channels. And when they are combined together, they make, uh, well, they're gonna make white, but they, they combine to make yellow. So if we stop previewing this, we need to eliminate uh, just the uh, the red. So if we come out of our texture coordinates here, we need a component mask and we'll set this just to mask the green channel. And if we right click this and preview it, oh, I didn't want to do that. Right click and start previewing. See now we have a value of zero at the bottom and a value of one at the top. Uh, it's a little bit blown out so we can um, add some uh, some extra controls here. For one, uh, we wanted to do the opposite. We want it to be one at the base and zero at the tip. So if we type in one and then minus, we get a one minus node, which will invert any incoming value. And if we go uh, grab ourselves a multiplier and another scalar, this one we will call opacity. And our opacity controls, let's say 0 .0 0 0.2, hook these guys up. And then if we also come out of here into a power node, which will multiply it by a factor, like by a, well, by a, by a multiplier, except it's a power node. <laughs> so it's a, gonna, gonna multiply it by an exponent instead of just a raw number. And uh, we'll duplicate this scalar here, hit F2 to rename it. Oh, that didn't work, that's okay. We can just double click. No, not playing ball. That's right, we'll just rename it over here. And we'll just call it power. Uh, yep, there we go. So in the power, let's say uh, solid two. Hook this up and then plug this into opacity and there is the result. So we have it start pretty bright at the bottom and it disappears to nothing out of the end. And we can up our opacity value if we want to get more uh, more of that showing through. In fact, I might keep it down a little lower, maybe 0 0.3, something like that. These are all values that we can adjust when we instance the material in a little bit. So let's just save that and we can move forward. The next thing we want to make is our... Uh, 
is our light function. So let's right click, make ourselves a new material. Call this one flashlights, underscore mat. And we'll open him up too. Next, uh, we'll hit T and click in our texture sample and we want our flashlight, flashlight light cookie. There it is, so we've got a little texture here in our texture node and also a color. So we hit three again and right click, convert this to a parameter, call it color. Um, and then just like before, we're gonna multiply and hook these guys up just like that. But like, or well, unlike before, let's just make this color node just a pure, pure white for the time being. The next thing we want to do is uh, ease off the edges of our light cookie here. We want to be able to adjust the, uh, uh, the sort of out of bounds of our flashlight. And this will help, uh, say if you wanted to do like a, like batteries, like a battery system. And as the battery gets lower, the, the sort of light gets less bright and starts to, starts to fade away and flicker. This is a good way that you can control that uh, by using, if we right click, a radial gradient exponential. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. If we right click and start previewing it, and in fact, we hit this plane here so we can see it on a plane. This is what a radiant gradial, radial gradient exponential looks like. This is going to make a circular gradient uh, exponent from, from one to zero in every direction. And it's got some, it's got some controls uh, if we stop previewing that. For example, radius and density, which are the two that we're going to be concerned with. So it's holding S and click, get a blur radius, and S and click again, get ourselves blur density. And we'll hook these guys up just like that. Our blur density is going to be something like 0 0.3 and our radius uh, will be 0 0.5, something like that. And then we can use this. We can hold an M and click to multiply. I mean, the reason that we can't see it right now is because we're not previewing. So we can uh, preview it like that, get a sort of idea. We've sort of softened out the, uh, the split between the, the black and the white. So we'll stop previewing that, hook these guys up to a multiply, plug this into emissive, and there you go. So there we see we've sort of cut down on the values a little bit, but of course uh, this is this is wrong. This is just on a plane, it's just a regular material. So we need to convert this into a light function, which is uh, actually pretty simple. It's just this uh, material domain uh, here. We'll just drop this down to light function and uh, we are ready to go. That's That's all we need to do. So let's save this and then we can get into the good stuff and start building out our actual mechanics. So I've gone and used the first person character pawn, which is the uh, the exact same pawn from, from last time, from the fireball video. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can follow along with that if you wanna match this exactly, but this will work with any first person character to work with the, the template right out of the box, uh, as long as we have uh, some things here like the arms, the gun, and uh, this little muzzle scene component, which is just a scene component right there at the end of the barrel. Uh, again, if you'd like a little more info about the setup, uh, you can watch the, the fireball video from, uh, from, from last month or whatever. So let's set up our lights. So under, so we'll have this muzzle here selected because we want to make some children of this muzzle uh, scene component. And firstly, we're going to want to get our spotlights. So now we have a spotlight. I mean, we can't see any light because there's nothing for it to hit, uh, but it's, it's there already just with the default values. And then under that, we want a static mesh which will be our cone. And in fact, just so we make sure we get it right, we'll find out where we put them. Uh, bust out here, drop our flashlight cone, just there, just like that. And oh, we'll uh, put our materials in too. So let's get our flashlight cone. Oh, uh, we'll make some instances. Sorry, I've got a bit jumbled there. Let's make some instances of our materials so that we can control uh, the values in real time. There we go, that's the last one and then assign this to our cone, flashlight cone mat inst. And we'll rotate this guy so that he sits uh, sits flat. If we see here over on the, over on our uh, transforms here, I don't know why they're, we set these all to zero. We want y to be minus, minus 90. There we go. And our scale, if we have this little padlock here, we can manipulate all of them at once. Our scale could be something huge, uh, three, something bigger, I don't know, two maybe, two should be a, should be something. And our spotlight, we need our spotlight values to be set. We want a pretty huge intensity actually, otherwise the fall off is gonna be, uh, gonna be huge. We won't be able to see the light at the end of the hallway or anything like that. So we'll set this up to something like uh, 100 million. <laughs> so something huge, our attenuation radius at 5,000. Uh, let's see, what else did I? Oh, our cone, our inner cone and our outer cone. We'll set these both to 25 so that it's exactly matching our uh, flashlight cone. And uh, what else? Uh, our temperature. I like using temperature 
instead of uh, the color in the um, in the material, just it, it'll it'll it was vary between a blue light or a red light. Uh, we'll set this down to something quite warm, 5900, 4900. And uh, I think we'll call it there for the time being. We can tweak it later if we need to. And we'll just compile that and save it. And uh, let's see. We need to actually um, set our intensity back down to zero. Actually, we'll have our flashlight off by default. All right, so let's go to our event graph and we'll start building it out. So the first thing we'll do is get the F key. You can type in F key. Uh, this is slower depending on which key you pick, like depending on how often it pick, comes up in the list. But we can find our F key just like that. Make ourselves a new variable. Uh, call it is flashlight on. And we'll compile our blueprint so that we can uh, we can work it. Holding control and drag that in to get a get. Holding B and click to get a branch. Connect this here. Hook this up into our pressed. And then uh, play our sound. So if we come out of our true and where we play sound, just a play sound 2D. Play sound 2D will just play it straight out of the speakers in no particular location in 3D space. Just it's just going to play the sound directly, just in its most raw uh, kind of kind of way. And we can't forget to make sure it is the flashlight switch that we set it to. Control W will duplicate that node and we'll plug it into false as well. So every time we hit that F, we're going to be hitting that flashlight button. We'll hear the switch. Then uh, let's alt drag our boolean here to get a set node. Hook this up into true and false. In the uh, the false, so if it's true, we want it to be set to false. If it's false, we want it to be set to true. And then grab our spotlight uh, and our uh, static mesh. In fact, we have to set our static mesh by default to be, if we scroll down, to be invisible. Then we can set, set intensity here. So if our flashlight is uh, on, uh, we want it to be, or well, like we said before, sort of, and uh, maybe, yeah, like, like our 100 million or 10 million or whatever huge value it was. And then we'll duplicate this set intensity node down here and just set it to zero when it's off. I might have those around the wrong way. In fact, yeah, let's swap them over. One more zero. There we go. And our static mesh, all we'd have to do is set visibility. And we'll do it uh, using using our light here as a guide. Let's set, oh, can we do that? Duplicate this one. Set our visibility to on when the, uh, that's wrong, when the light is lit and set our visibility off when our light is at zero. And that's the end of our blueprint. So I'll sort of pack everything in here so we can see it all in the one screen. Uh, there we go. So yeah, all we're doing is pressing a key, checking this Boolean, playing a sound either way, and then alternating whether our flashlight is on or off and setting a few, uh, few simple uh, conditions. Another way that you could do this is if we come out of here into a flip-flop node, I don't want to click that, so. If we had a flip-flop node, every time this node gets fired, it's going to alternate A or B, which uh, can be handy for some things, but for something like this, like if you're making uh, more complex games where, for example, if something something else is going to be affecting whether your flashlight's on or off, uh, this this could become uh, could become a bit of an issue. You might find yourself pressing buttons twice, which the player never likes. They think that there's some sort of bug or anything. Uh, so we won't, uh, we won't use that for this example. It's much more reliable just to use a Boolean because the engine remembers which state it is depending on what's happened. And you can switch this Boolean anywhere else in your, in your blueprint. So let's compile that and save it. And now the next thing is we need some dark. Uh, we need a dark place that we can have a look at our uh, flashlight. So uh, this is just the, the third person, uh, the third person template level. Just grab the floor, uh, hold in alt and then drag up on the Z axis like this. And we'll make ourselves a bit of a roof, uh, close it in like that. And then over here in modes, if we find ourselves in the lights tab, some point lights, and we can scatter some of these around. So I'm just going to leave them at the default value. Uh, just scatter, scatter some point lights around a bit like this. Grab them like this. If you're holding alt and shift, you can uh, sort of travel along with them. Uh, where's my little gimbal? Here we go. So I'll shift again in this direction. And a little bit about lights. I mean, if you want to learn about lights, I have a couple of light, uh, light videos. My one about light functions is particularly good. I highly recommend watching it if you want a little bit more info. But we'll set all of these lights here to static. That way that little X is going to disappear from them. That just means overlapping dynamic lights. And there's a limit of, I think it's four 
uh, overlapping lights at a time. And if you hit that, uh, so if we switch these back to even to stationary, if you're seeing this little X here, that means it's going to defer to, um, to dynamic, which is a bit more taxing on the engine. You don't necessarily want to do that. So we'll just set them all to static. And as you can also see, it's not very dark in here. So we need to rebuild the lighting. So uh, let's just save all. Head up here to the build menu. Uh, we'll go production quality, but preview should be fine if you just want to do this very quickly. And then hit build lighting only. All right. And once that's done, you should see something a little bit like this. And uh, again, if you don't, I will highly recommend you watch my video on lighting functions. Uh, it'll go through a lot of different things, even things like um, light map resolution, uh, in case because you want to have some sort of you know higher detail, uh, you know shadows and, and that kind of thing. But this is looking pretty good. Uh, we have some nice dark over here. We have some nice dark uh, corners, and we can see how our um, how our flashlight is going to work for the first time uh, just by heading up here and hitting play. All right, here we are. So let's just hit F. Oh, well, as you can see, hitting F is working, uh, but we're not seeing our light function. So let's hit escape, head back to our character, find our spotlight, scroll down. You'll see light function material. Can't believe I forgot about this. It's the most important part. And we'll drop our flashlight map instance into there. Compile and save, and then try again. So here we are, and we hit F. Okay, I think our, uh, so you can see the light cookies there on the end, but our flashlight cone is getting in the way. So if we just alt tab, and then we can open up our uh, instance here, and we can affect these even while the game is playing. So let's uh, tick all of these here. Our opacity could probably go down 0 0.2, 0 0.15, something like that. Power of 1, 2, 3. 3 is not bad. 2.5, 2. We'll go 2.5. And a glow crank, uh, the glow crank, let's see how high that can go. If we set it up to like, yeah, okay, so, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll keep it to five, actually. We'll save that as is. Oh, there's a fireball. Uh, again, this is the same pawn as in my uh, last video, so <laughs> it's uh, it's still it's still shooting fireballs around. And we can head into the dark now. So you can see, all spooky, very spooky. And as you see, like, even because we set that intensity up very high, we can see the end of the hallway quite a long distance before we've uh, we've even got there. And there's more that we can tweak here with our light too. So as you can see, the light sort of goes that far. Uh, but here in our settings, we can set it to go uh, our radius. We can set our radius out even further. Uh, it'll go above this maximum value, but uh, wouldn't recommend it. You'll start getting a you might start getting problems if there's complex lighting setups in your scene. Our uh, source radius will. So here we are at the source of our light, our source radius. We can boost this up uh, so it looks like it's not coming straight from a, you know, straight from a point. We've also got the soft source radius. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this does. I've never, never noticed a, a difference. So I think it has something to do with uh, lighting artifacts. And then our source length, which you can see here. So you can make it seem like your point light is coming from uh, a much wider source than just a, just a ball. I think it's going to diffuse your light in uh, more than one direction. All right, so we can compile that and save it. In fact, we might grab our, uh, where is our flashlight instance here? Um, we'll set this to a plane so that we can see it a bit better. We can adjust these values to affect how brightly our uh, flashlight is going to appear. So save that and let's save everything. And let's just have one more look. That's looking pretty good. We have a pretty good flashlight, very simple little blueprint uh, that that you might, you know, it's sort of like a day one kind of introductory exercise that uh, that you might see. It's a, I don't know, some kind of game dev school <laughs> or the uh, the underscore academy, if you might want to call it that. Whatever, I'm rambling. Thanks again to Cheese Hazard for the suggestion. This has been a, it's a really cool little thing. Very, um, very easy to do, very easy to pull off. Difficult to get wrong <laughs> if, uh, if you want to think about it that way. And a great introduction to, uh, whoa, what was that? I don't know. But a great introduction uh, to blueprint scripting and how to handle components, uh, simple Boolean variables, and that kind of thing. So uh, thanks again for the, uh, for the request there, Mr. Cheese. I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. Bye.